Hello and welcome to part four of six for the grade eight Alberta science curriculum, mechanical systems. We are now going to talk about speed ratios. Speed ratios measure the distance an object travels in a given amount of time. The measuring of a machine affects speed called the speed ratio. It is calculated by dividing the input distance by the output distance. So speed ratio is input distance divided by or over output distance. Another way of saying this is speed ratio is uh, distance input divided by distance output. D is equal to the distance in meters. Using the formula provided, you can also calculate the speed ratio of any device including this inclined plane. Less force but greater distance. You do not get something for nothing when using a machine. The advantage of gaining force is offset by the disadvantage of losing distance. An inclined plane makes it possible to lift heavy objects using a smaller force. Examples include loading ramps, wheelchair access ramps, but you have to move the object over a much longer distance. Efficiency is the measure of how well a machine or a device uses energy. The more energy that is lost, the less efficient a machine is. Efficiency is represented by a percentage. Efficiency is equal to the mechanical advantage divided by the speed ratio multiplied by 100. In complex machines, there are many subsystems that are affected by friction and other factors. Because of this, most complex machines are not very efficient. No machine can be 100% efficient. The higher the efficiency, the better the machine is at transferring energy. The reason that machines are never 100% efficient is because most of the energy that is lost by a machine is due to friction. So how can a machine be designed to be more efficient than it already is? Boosting efficiency. Some of the effort force put into a machine is used to overcome the frictional force of the machine. There, is always, there are always ways to boost the efficiency of a machine. Lubricants, reducing the surface area interaction where parts rub together and good maintenance of the machine will help reduce friction and increase efficiency. Useful friction. There are reasons why we need friction in a machine to perform, for it to perform properly. Slipping and sliding would occur and proper gripping would be impossible without friction. There are many places where friction is useful including Bicycle tires create friction with the road to give you grip. In baseball, um, players use rosin to, to form a stronger grip with the bat. Gymnasts also use rosin to provide grip on slippery metal surfaces like rings or bars. Curlers sweep the front or sweep ice in front of the rock to decrease the friction over the ice surfaces. Sweeping momentarily warms the ice to create a thin layer of water under the stone. This acts as a lubricant. Scientifically, work is done when a force acts on an object to make that object move. In order to say that work is being done, there must be movement. If there is no movement, no matter how much force is used, no work can be done. The direction of the force applied to the object has to be in the same direction that the object is being moved. The direction of movement as a result of the force being applied to the object. For example, a worker uses a force to move a large carton up a ramp. The energy pushing is transferred to the carton from the worker. Thus, we say that the worker did work on the carton as long as the carton moved up the ramp is as a result of the worker's pushing action or force. Calculating work. The amount of work is calculated by multiplying the force times the distance the object moves. The formula looks like this. Work is equal to force times distance. Force is always measured in newtons and distance is always measured in meters. If you don't have your distance in meters you need to convert to meters. The resulting work unit is called a joule, after the name of the English scientist James Joule. Energy and work. Energy and work are closely related because without energy there would be no work. 
Work is done when there is a transfer of energy and movement occurs. Energy provides the force needed to make an object move. Energy can be in the form of human energy or muscle power, chemical reactions in the body producing energy, or it can be in the form of another energy source such as gasoline for a car. A machine transfers energy from its source to the object causing the object to move. There is a very complicated chain of events that make a car move beginning with it being fueled up with gasoline all the way through its many subsystems each doing work to eventually the tires rotating to make the car move forwards and backwards. Work in machines. There are many different types of simple machines that help us do work. The work done with a machine is the same as the work done without it. This can be shown by calculating work input and work output. Work input is the work needed to use or operate the machine. Work input is equal to force input times distance input. Work output is the work done by the machine. Work output is equal to force output times distance output. Work and friction. Friction is the reason that work input does not equal work output in real situations. Friction affects the machine's efficiency. Efficiency can be calculated using work input and work output. Efficiency is equal to work output divided by work input.